I didn't see it coming. I didn't, but I should have. Hello, my wonderful viewers, and welcome to another episode of Betty Adams Overanalyzes. Today, we are going to be taking a fully spoilery look at Kaiju number 8, chapter 116. I will be getting into all the spoilers in this review, so if you don't want those, I want to remind you that this is your last week, your last... Five days to get yourself a copy of Hidden Fires, Dragons, Aliens, and Things That Go Boomp in the Night, available on Indiegogo for October 2024. You'll be in an author signed copy, and there are actually extra perks. Uh, two short stories, Seed Time and Harvest, set in the Hidden Fires universe. Check out the link below the video to order your, order your signed author copy now. Again and again, now we're getting into spoilers here, I focused on how brilliantly Matsumoto pulls off plot twists in this in this manga. Now, however, this is, and also that this is a standard Shonen Jump manga. And what Matsumoto's genius here is managing to pull off an actual plot twist in what is 100% a formulaic Shonen Jump manga. Good guys always win, bad guys always lose, the main characters have plot armor, and yet Matsumoto still manages to surprise this surprise us. I call these Matsumoto's corkscrew plot twists. We still know where the story started and where it's going, but Matsumoto takes us for a wild ride along the way. And in this chapter, we get a brilliant example of that. The rivalry between the first and third divisions and why Jin Narumi takes it so personally. The way it was set up, we were set to focus on the rivalry between the captains, Jin Narumi and Mina Ashiro. And this kind of sort of made sense because Mina Ashiro is not nearly as good a close quarters fighter as Jin Narumi, but she is far and away a better ranged fighter. And because she is well-behaved and demure, she gets far more media attention. She is the golden child of the Defense Force. They love to put her face up on the advertisements. They use her in their recruiting ads. Look at this well-behaved model of the Japanese spirit of endurance and cooperation. As opposed to wild child Jin Narumi, captain of the 1st Division, who, as Mina had said, his only redeeming quality is that he can kill Kaiju. He is a complete wild card. He doesn't follow orders well. He does not play well with others. He's constantly going online and making a fool of himself on social media. And the Defense Force would have gotten rid of him a long time ago, just out of sheer shame, except that Director General Iso Shinamaya liked this kid, saw his potential, and trained him to the point that they simply cannot lose the resource that Jin Narumi proves himself to be when it comes to killing giant class kaiju. Because of this, even though we were clearly shown in the first chapter where the third division shows up on the first division's turf, that there is a massive amount of energy and chemistry between Jin Narumi and Vice Captain Hoshina, we never questioned that the main rivalry was between Jin Narumi and Mina Ashiro. Even though Mina is shown not to encourage the rivalry, I mean, we've seen her send one pointed verbal barb at Jin Narumi, but that was still a compliment. She goes, she said the only thing he's good at is killing kaiju, but that's what he's proudest of, his ability to kill kaiju. So if you actually look back over the chapters, it doesn't make sense that he would have this fierce rivalry with Mina, but it does make sense that he would have this fierce rivalry with... Hoshina, because when we see them interact, Hoshina is just constantly sniping and taking jabs, not at the thing that Narumi is proudest of, his ability to kill kaiju, but at Hoshina is always there to point out Narumi's weaknesses, to rub it in his face that he's not the best close combat melee fighter. Hoshina is. He's not the best ranged fighter. Mina is. It is Hoshina who is constantly stirring up this rivalry. Now, would the rivalry exist without Hoshina? Oh, absolutely. You, you've got the rivalry between the Army and the Marines. You've got the rivalry between the Army and the Navy in the United States. These interdepartmental rivalries are classic. Mainly it's a fight over resources, who gets the most resources based on who has the best reputation, but these rivalries exist and would exist no matter who the captain and vice captain were. 
But looking back, it is now blatantly clear, as it is made in this chapter, that the primary source of this fierce personal rivalry between the first and third division command officers is entirely because Hoshina and Narumi are not letting it die. And in the process of the revealing this, we find out something that makes perfect sense and in retrospect should have been obvious, but has never been relevant before, which is not really a plot twist. It's just more world building. Captain Narumi's uh, uh, kaiju eye works on humans as well as Kai explains how the first division has so many super powerful officers. Kikoru observed the first division, every single officer in the first division had a power rating of a platoon leader. So the lowest grunt in the first division is the equivalent of a platoon leader in any other division. How were they able to recruit this? Because we, fi we found out that you really can't train yourself past that wall. You have to have that initial genetic compatibility with the technology. And without it, it doesn't really matter how much training you do, you're not going to be able to pass that 20% wall. So how was the first division able to identify and recruit all of these? Because that really is what it's about. The big Ivy League universities, Harvard, Yale, how do they maintain their their reputation of performing the best of creating the best professionals the brightest in their field if as science has showed us the quality of the education really doesn't have that much of an effect simple it's not about the quality of the education at harvard you can get the exact same education at any local school what it is is that harvard rejects anyone who is under a certain talent level Unless you know you're really rich, but that's neither here nor there. So this is the same principle that the First Division works on. They're able to maintain the quality of their troops because Captain Narumi is able to scout uh, uh, people based purely on their talent by using his kaiju eye. So whenever they have joint training with the other divisions, Narumi goes out, scouts out the best people based on how their energy flows and how compatible they'll be with the weaponry, and then recruits them. Which, I mean, probably makes Captain Narumi not very popular with the other division captains. <laughs> Just want to wrap up with that final little character moment we see at the end. In the midst of this battle, when Hoshina is completely focused, or seems to be completely focused on taking down Kaiju number nine, we see one of his motivations. He glances back over where Kaiju number eight is bleeding out against the wall, and he says, even if Mina manages to revive Kafka at this point, and he's thinking not at, not of this creature as Kaiju number eight, but as of Kafka, Kafka's spent. I have to keep him from fighting again. Now, you know, and I know that that's a useless sentiment. Kafka's Kaiju number eight is actually going to rise up and beat the living snot out of Kaiju number nine. But Hoshina is not that genre savvy. He doesn't know that he's in a Shonen Jump manga and that's the ultimate end. But still, the sentiment is there. Even in the midst of this fierce rivalry, Hoshina's thoughts are with protecting his officers, and that's what makes him such a special character. But what do you think, my wonderful viewers? Did the fact that the third first division rivalry was primarily between Narumi and Hoshina shock you? Or were, did you see this coming before I did? Leave a comment below telling me what you saw and when you knew it. Hit that like and subscribe button, and peace out, my wonderful viewers. And don't forget, it's your last week to get your author signed copy of Hidden Fires. Bard has led his pool of outcast warriors across the stars to the strange blue planet with its cold, nearly dead surface. For years, they clung to each other in the magma caverns, only going to the surface to humor the curiosity of their hosts, until the day a young alien wandered into Bard's song and resonated with him and gave his pool a hope of something more. Now, a dark threat from Bard's homeworld threatens the fragile connection he has formed with this alien family, and the stars seeing of war. Get your copy of Hidden Fires, available only on Indiegogo this October 2024. Check out the link below the video, like, subscribe,